Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today is a big day for Blender users because Blender 3.0 just shipped. Now there's nothing really significant about that number, it's just the next in the versioning sequence, we're done the 2.x line, so there's nothing massively different in this, but there's three pretty major features here and one minor one that I happen to really like. So we're going to take a look at those four items in this video, then we will jump in and take a look at the release notes. So here you can see this is Blender uh, 3.0, uh, again released today, you should be able to download it right now and we're going to go through those features uh, in kind of relatively arbitrary order so the first one we've got is cycles x i think this is probably the marquee thing now the x stands for 10 as in it's the 10th anniversary of cycles and if you do not know cycles is the uh rendering engine in here so if you you render um uh, your results out to an image or to a movie. It's Cycles that is worked on, and they've done a lot of things in the Cycles render engine for this particular release. In fact, it was rewritten underneath, and what you're seeing here, the viewport, now, it definitely looks slow compared to EV, but this is actually substantially faster than it used to be. On top of that, and it doesn't make for a great video, so I'm not going to showcase it here, but render speeds for cycles themselves were rewritten in a new core. Uh, now, you'll take advantage of your GPUs, rendered like two to eight times faster, I think it was. It might even be more than that. It might be two to ten times faster. So, the new cycles... Um, Core is definitely nice for people doing renders and for people that are using the interactive viewport. Uh, believe it or not, this is fast. We've also got some improvements for like optics, denoising, etc. But Cycle X uh, is probably the big new feature here for people that do rendering in Blender. You should see your render times get substantially faster. Now, a quick FYI if you are on the Mac, uh, the GPU accelerated Cycles X stuff isn't going to be in until 3.1. Now, the good news is uh, there are engineers from the Apple Silicon team working working with them to get the GPU support in place. Uh, but for now, uh, Cycles, it, Cycles X is uh, NVIDIA AMD only. It's going to come to Mac 3.1, but you should see substantially faster render times in Blender 3. Next up, we got a bit of a catch-all. And this started back in, I think it was Blender 2.93 was the first release of Geometry Nodes. Might have even been earlier than that. But Geometry Nodes have gotten re-architected to a great degree. And now we've got uh, better support for uh, attributes and properties in place with the way that nodes work. They re-architected several of the nodes that existed before. Uh, so if you are using a previous version, I'll show you how to enable the old one so you can follow along to an old tutorial. At the same time, they've added a number of new nodes, including new ones for text and curves that should make life better. Now, if you do not know how geometry nodes work, it's basically node-based construction of geometry objects. So here is a node graph in action that goes together to create these procedural buildings. What it allows you to do, and this is like a primo thing if you're in game development doing level design, watch as I change the size of this building. So you've got parametric control over things because all of these things are being driven by these node graphs. Very cool stuff there. And in Blender 3, you had a lot of re-architecting of the way things are done. We added curved nodes, again, text nodes. Uh, if you want to grab the old legacy nodes, by the way, come in here, edit preferences. And then what you want to do is turn on uh, the developer options. That can be achieved by going to the interface tab here and then turning on developer extras right there. Then you'll notice you now have this experimental tab here and you can turn on geometry nodes legacy. This will give you access to the uh, pre 3.x nodes. Those are all going to be deprecated in Blender 4, but if you want to follow along with an existing tutorial, a lot of nodes got re-architected. So with the geometry nodes changes in Blender 3, do be aware you may want to turn on the legacy nodes there, but definitely a nice new feature in that regard. So now we're going to show you probably the uh, more, let's say mundane new feature. And that is the all new knife tool. So the knife tool got a lot of improvements. Let's go here. Switch over to editing mode, like so, and you will notice, just expand this one out. The knife tool here has a lot of new functionality. It, it just works better on the whole, and one of the neat new features of it, so we'll get to this when we go through the release notes of what has changed in the knife tool, uh, but if you're cutting up geometry and so on, the knife tool has been a staple, bread and butter, pun not intended. Uh, but what you can do now, and this is actually kind of neat, so I'm going to go back here to object mode. I'm going to add another mesh into the world, like so. I'm going to select both of those. Let's go into edit mode, like so. And then now using the knife tool, you can actually cut across multiple objects. So there's been a lot of improvements to the knife tool in general, uh, but I, I think multi-object cutting is probably one of the coolest things. Probably the smallest new feature that I really like, uh, but I like the knife tool, so I like improvements to the knife tool. 
Now, one bonus little tweak to the UI we're going to cover before we get to the final new thing to demonstrate is the change to the way the corner menus work. So before in the past, if you wanted to basically, if I wanted to bring this window down so it split here, I had to split this window over like so until they lined up perfectly. And then I could go ahead and merge it down like this. But now what you can actually do is just grab a corner menu and bring it across. Now that is probably the single biggest beautiful change they have made in this release. I have always found the quarter menus to be incredibly confusing and I do definitely like that new feature. But finally, let's show you the last major new feature and that is the um, asset browser. It's also the pose library. So asset browser right here doesn't look all that special. But what you can do is basically take anything in your scene. So for example, I can grab this cockpit right here, which is cube 21 and you can go ahead and mark it as an asset and it will now show up in your asset browser. At the same time, you can do that for any material. So you can go to say Vetro here. I can say mark as asset and it shows up in my asset browser. So then if I've got a new scene, so let's go ahead here and create a new scene like so. Um, come on lighting. Where's my lighting? All right, let's go back here. I guess I don't have any lighting in that scene. All right, so here we got a brand new scene. What we do is basically, I, I don't have material, so I can bring the items into the scene, instantiate like that. Uh, I want to bring material in, bring it in like that. So it gives you this drag and drop access to your assets. But the cool thing about it is what you can do is you can come in here to the um, preferences, file paths, and you can actually set up a directory full of blend files that will then show up if I come in here. So if I, if I set a folder with a blend file in it, I can then come down here and go to my user library. So you see here, I have to set one up, but then you can create these libraries of assets. So it makes handling all of your, managing your assets, your various different uh, textures and animations, because this also works for poses, by the way, uh, makes it really clean and straightforward. So that's the last thing that made it into this release. This was supposed to be in an earlier version. It got bumped back. And speaking of bumped back, uh, the Vulcan refactor for the EV renderer uh, did get bumped back. So EV right now, which is the real-time renderer you see in action uh, right here, this, uh, it's supposed to have a new underlying Vulcan renderer. That's unfortunately going to be in Blender 3.1. But we got a lot of really nice things in this release. Again, so you've got the new asset browser. We're going to change the way you work with your files. We've got Cycles X, which makes the renderer substantially faster. We've got the all-new knife tool. And we've got the other item I'm forgetting. Oh, the re-architecting of the geometry nodes. So definitely some really nice things there. And then a couple of minor-ish things like the new knife tool. And again, the changes to the way the UI worked. I really like that change. That's going to just make customizing the user interface so much less nitpicky than it used to be before. So that one, kudos to that change. So now let's jump in, take a look at the release notes. So here we are at the release notes. I got to say, Blender have really upped their game in the last couple of releases. They've also done uh, show show off reels to kind of showcase what's new in each new release, which is actually quite nice as well. Uh, so if you want to check those out, they're linked in this linked uh, update. But you can see here kind of a bit of a top level summary of what's there. We're going to have some repetition of the things we already covered, obviously. But cycles is faster. Okay, so the numbers I said earlier were right. Two to eight times faster real world scenes uh, compared to Blender 2.93 on an NVIDIA Quattro with optics um, denoising turned on. Uh, so less lag, more fun. Uh, so more responsive viewport due to scheduling and display algorithms. Um, so I'm not really sure what they're showcasing here, but as you see, they've definitely sped up the cycles viewport rendering. We saw that in action as well. Uh, some updates to the open image denoise. So upgrades to version 1.4, you can see the results or maybe you can't actually it's very visible on the, uh, on the uh, couch in the background. So you can see that the one thing it really kind of stripped away a lot of the details. So uh, that's definitely nice there. Uh, shadow Terminators, new option to reduce shadow artifacts that often happen in low poly game models, offset rays from flat surfaces to match where they would be for a smooth surface as specified by the normals. Um, we got uh, Catch Beyond Shadow. Say hi to the new Shadow Catcher, completely rewritten for Blender 3. Features include indirect or environmental light support for more accurate composition. Uh, options for lights to be considered included or excluded and new shadow catcher passed to fully handle colored indirect lights in emission. Uh, as you can see the results again here in action. So again, I really do appreciate their uh, updated release notes. They really make it illustrating things quite nice. Uh, subsurface surface scattering now supports uh, anisotrophy. I always have trouble saying that one. An index refraction for random walk. You see the results in action there. 
really kind of take a look at his nose. That's kind of where it's most profound. It's pretty subtle, but it gives you a more uh, fleshy result. Uh, and then we can see a number of other minor releases in here as well. Uh, the asset browser was added in. Again, we kind of saw a very brief demo of this in action. It's going to really kind of change the way you organize things, and you can literally start dragging and dropping things out. You can break things down into categories, really kind of sort things out. You can also give things like attributes and tags and search for those tags and so on. It should make organizing things quite nice. So as you can see, catalogs and tagging, as I just mentioned uh, earlier. Geometry node updates. Um, so we've changed the way that fields workflow works. Works and the uh, named attributes work. Um, they've also added a couple of other uh, advancements such as curves and uh, text there. So new nodes there as well. Um, so there's the text nodes that have been added in. Uh, play with materials inside geometry nodes. New nodes include set material, replace material, and so on. Uh, instancing, the way geometry nodes work with instances has been improved to make it more intuitive. By the way, instancing is going to be one of those areas where if you're using a 2.9x version, you're going to see a lot of change. Uh, we've also got um, EV attributes. Mesh attributes are no longer cycles exclusive. EV now supports attributes, including those generated by geometry nodes, which is quite nice as well. Uh, so geometry nodes is definitely moving forward and it's a nice thing to see user interface improvements so visual refresh uh, the theme was updated uh, again area management I love this this is probably the single biggest or a smallest big change I guess you could say if, if you want to make sense of that a number of UI tweaks across the board um, we got uh, strip thumbnail so video sequencer now supports thumbnail previews uh, strip transform tools you can use GR and S for quick transforms etc then we've got, uh, this is actually kind of neat. I didn't mention this because it's hard to demo, uh, but VR got better. You can now use controllers to, con to um, visualize controllers, the ability to navigate one's way through a scene in VR using controller inputs. Uh, so VR support in Blender is definitely getting nicer. It's still not at the point where you could author in Blender, uh, but now you can navigate scenes and use VR controllers to do so, which is definitely a nice set forward. And kind of... Um, to you also using the asset library, the pose library system got a massive revamp. So you create poses directly uh, from the 3D viewport, drag um, blend into the pose uh, and so on. Again, using the same kind of setup as the, um, the asset library that was added. So organizing your scenes and your assets and so on is gonna get definitely get nicer. Got some improvements to grease pencil as well. Uh, dot dash, a new modifier allows you to generate dot dash lines on strokes automatically. Um, so a bunch of other changes there across the board. Uh, quick saving, so uh, loading and saving compressed blend files is now magnitudes faster thanks to the v standard algorithm instead of gzip. So we are seeing, actually there's no numbers here. Uh, so you can see loading times, that's about two and a half times faster for the Blender 2.92 splash screen and like almost 10 times faster for saving. That's definitely nice there as well. Uh, USD importer improvements as well. USD is definitely going to be part of the future. Same with Alembic. Um, so, and yeah, on it goes. So definitely uh, a lot of nice things in this release. I, I still hold that the ones that I focused on are the biggest ones. Uh, I like the tweaks to the user interface. I do really love the way you can resize things. And weirdly, they didn't mention the knife tool at all in the update as far as I saw. Uh, but geometry nodes continue to improve text and curves there as well. The asset browser is definitely nice. Um, the, what else do we got in here? Cycles uh, 10 and so on and so forth. Definitely a great release. And if you want, check out the release notes. I'll have them in the linked article down below. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Blender 3. Quite a bit there to be excited about. Uh, if you want to go ahead, you can download it now. Uh, good luck. Their servers might be uh, melting at this point in time. Let's see how well that actually does. So let's save you. How are you doing? Eh, they're not doing too bad, actually. Well, actually, they are. Uh, so do keep in mind, your, your downloads on release day are always a little fun. So it might take you a bit of time to grab this one, but it is definitely worth picking up. Uh, even just the new usability uh, in the interface is, is nice for sure. So that is Blender 3.0. Let me know what you think, favorite feature, etc. And I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.